today on The Real. On Girl Chat, working affordable fashion. I got on a $39.99 and it and looks look amazing. Good. Then, growing up as Jocelyn Hernandez. My dad died of a heroin overdose. It's time once again to mean this. When your mom makes you be friends with the weird kid. <laughs> Then we've got Dr. Oz. This is a fascinating show. <laughs> Plus, guest co-host Jocelyn Hernandez is back. I say Miss Hernandez if you're nasty. Hey! Oh. hey. herself from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta is Jocelyn Hernandez. Yeah. <laughs> Jocelyn. Good morning. I know you look ready for Girl Chat. Are you feeling ready? Uh, absolutely, and I just lost my earpiece, my top open, and look, I'm oh, back no. to normal. Okay. Everything is amazing. And we didn't even notice. We didn't even notice. Yeah. That's what I love and about I'm you. I'm so excited to be here. You guys look great. And the so are you. So, so cute. Yes, yes. they yes. look amazing. <laughs> This look, this looks Me like too. you almost could have gone first lady from the church with us, but at the same, it's super. I actually think you look really sexy today. Yeah, yeah very yeah. very yeah. sexy. Urban boudoir. Okay, since we're talking about fashion, Adrian. We all can say that we looked forward to the Met Gala every single year, right, yes. my fashionistas? Yeah. Where you at? Okay. So, of course, this week it happened, and we love seeing all the creativity that takes place. It's such a star-studded event, and this year's gala did not disappoint. It was so magical, and I know you were loving it, too, because when Lonnie gets into fashion, it's like scroll, 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 because you get into posting it on your Instagram. What was uh, your favorite? Well, okay, first of all, there's two ways to look at the Met Gala. You've okay. got the celebrities who are going to honor the theme, right? And then you've got the celebs who are going to come in their own fashion. Right. Now, this okay. year's theme was real tricky because they were honoring Ray. Because what was the name of yeah. it? Because I'm going to now. Yes, the Congodasan founder, yeah. Ray Kuakobo. She is amazing, and she creates things that are very sculptural and architectural. Ah. So if you're going to wear one of her pieces, you are really going to have to rock one of her pieces. And that is exactly what Rihanna did, you guys, and okay. Helen Lassichon. <laughs> Pharrell's wife. I mean, you get, you guys, a lot of her pieces are known for not having arm sleeves, so I don't even know how they had dinner that night. Look yeah. at Helen right here. Yeah. Anna Wintour keeps that guest list real tight. So yeah. you're a specific star that comes on to this show. Yeah. And to see just all these artists come out and their celebrities come out in their fashionably fabulous, fabulous ways, like Priyanka Chopra in that trench coat. Yeah. I love With that, that Ralph train. Lauren piece. Yes. Oh, look at this. Wow, look that at that trench so coat. Fantastic. That's beautiful. And the Kendall Jenner in the La Perla. She looks beautiful. Oh, Kendall Jenner. Oh, that, yeah, I mean, that's she something gorgeous. you can't always do. Girl, she had on a tanga. Okay, oh, yes. <laughs> she did. Here's the thing right here. This girl, she's a beautiful, sexy woman. And a lot of people didn't like her outfit because it's been done before. But I liked it, the trench coat. I well, thought it was yeah, cool. Yeah, it kind of looked like what Beyonce did for Ring the Alarm MTV Music Awards. Remember, she did Ring the Alarm. And she had on the long trench coat. She but honey, Beyonce ain't the only one that did it because I've done a trench coat too. Everybody done that. You've done a trench coat. You've done a trench coat. Yeah. You've done a trench coat. You've done a trench coat. With the train, with we the all train, get trench coat. With the train but that had over train. the whole I mean, staircase. Listen, That's what was cool about it. my favorite though, Cara Delevingne. How oh, about yeah, that gem yeah, encrusted yeah. Chanel? And guys, she even painted her bald head to look like a wispy, beautiful, sleek hairdo. Oh. Yeah, oh, you guys, that wasn't favorite. hair. She's actually completely bald. Like she shaved her head. head. Yes, she dope. did. She's in a yeah. film right now where she's. Can we talk oh, okay. about the men? I, 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 this is my favorite look. That's my okay. favorite. My favorite too. Honey, I'm yeah. sorry. So we, uh, let's get to the men because you know we gotta have future. That's future now. Look at. The, come on, Jeannie. Oh, what man. was that? Oh, what? So dapper. He and attended the, with Jordan Dunn. Yes. He's absolutely beautiful as well. She was wearing H and M. They go together? Not, I don't know. 
Maybe they were just attending together. You know, it, it's just they you know, look good together. I know good, that good, much. That too. was a really cool thing too. Seeing at something like the Met Gala having such accessible fashion brands on the red carpet, like to see Topshop and H and M. Nicki Minaj Nicki was wearing H and M well. head to toe. Well, I tell you why. This is the reason why. I say back to the conversation we had yesterday. This style come from the street girls. You got to remember the street girls cannot afford to wear a ten thousand dollar outfit. Yeah. yeah. So H and M. You know, you have H and M. I'm a fashionista. Right now, I have on a $2,000 intro outfit, but, you know, even five, six years ago, I couldn't afford yeah. a $2,000. Just five, six years ago. So, like, I'm just starting Girl. to get in the game and get my yeah. feet wet, but you gotta understand, even with me now, I'm an artist. When I do a music video, I will go in h and I will go in this strip yes. store and get me some stockings and make it work. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. There's nothing right. like the bodysuits from something like Fredericks of Hollywood. Yeah. 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 Everything. Absolutely. Yeah, I got, I got on a $39.99 and it and looks look good. amazing. I feel good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. The Met Gala should represent that, and all fashion should represent that. You do not have to have money to look good. First of all, it's all about how you feel. Yes. And second of all, it's about representing your own identity. Absolutely. Don't feel like you got to get brand names in order to look fly. But Jeannie, that's you true. didn't tell me who you like the best. I, Carla, Cara Delevingne, 100%. Yeah, she, because she, from she was head one of my toe, favorites. She's one just, of my favorite too. And to wear that piece, I mean, it was just, it was encrusted in crystal. Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. It no, looks I, way I, better no. than what I wore. <laughs> what did you wear? wear? Guys, so yesterday, Lily was here, and huh? yeah, she's my love daughter, and she was here, and um, she was like, okay, what is this big fuss about the Met Gala? Kind yeah. of like, yeah. you just, like yeah. what exactly is it? And I was trying to explain it, and then I was like, wait a second. I've been to the Met Gala. You yeah. have? I performed at the Met Gala when I was in 3LW. No, no way. way. Year was that? Year That's 2001. Awesome. Yes. And so I Googled 3LW Met Gala, and I was like, I remember us wearing something insane. I think the, the, the theme that year was bold, bold and electric. It was bold and that electric. Bold. So and electric. Now, this is the weird thing. The theme was bold so and electric. Cute. I can't remember exactly who the designer was that they were honoring, but I was 16 going on 17. Yeah. And when I tell you, you guys, I could care less. I didn't know what the Met Gala was. I was like, what are we going to? This was the first outfit we wore. It was by Luca Luca. And then we changed into a second outfit. That same year, um, there were some other really great performers, uh, Blink-182, I think something, it was yeah. like a very rock and yeah. roll kind of theme. So we performed, uh, I, it was so crazy. Just the idea that I went back and looked at this, was like, holy oh crap, gosh. I've been to the Met but Gala. And I would die to go today, but I've already been and I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even want to go. I was like, guys, I was so like not aware of what the Met Gala was that my hair is dripping wet there. <laughs> I went with my hair wet. I did my own makeup. At the time, MAC Pigments had just come out. I had on blue uh, eyeliner with yellow and green eyeshadow. I did my own makeup. Yeah. I, you still look cool. I think yeah, you did. So so you did. I, think, I think you guys gave them, and this is back to street feel, you gave them timeless street, street. look. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Like, we, did. we called ourselves Ghetto Pop. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, well, one big surprise at this year's Met Gala was actress Gwyneth Paltrow, who four years ago had vowed to never attend again, calling the gala unfun. <laughs> Paltrow's change of heart comes just days after it was announced that she'd be teaming up with gala chairwoman Anna Winter to launch a print version of our lifestyle site Goop. So ladies, have you ever been in a situation where you declared an ultimatum but then had to reverse it? I do that every day. Do yeah. you do it every day? <laughs> like what? Bad, We're bit. women. You know, like, you know, like. We're women. You know, something is, like, happening, like, you know, like my baby daddy. He be acting all right for one day, you know. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I love him. I think this is just the man of my dreams. Let's just make it happen. And then, like, 20 minutes later, he says something that's so unsexy. And I'm like, what was I thinking about? <laughs> okay? Like. That's true. That's it's just ridiculous. I just can't deal. You ever but go to a restaurant and you get upset? You, you know, you like tell them, let me see the manager. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm never coming to your restaurant ever again. This was ridiculous. And he said, I'm gonna give you free dessert. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, straight up. You know, straight up. Just, we straight always up. like. And you know, I think about. I'm like, what makes humans do that? Because I think everybody do that. Yeah. We're be temperamental. Yes, we're temperamental. Well, it's change of heart and never say never. And we're women.
it just happens all the time. Like, have you guys ever had a real bender of a night? Like a real, like you wake up the next day and you swear you can't even think about drinking again. The smell of it will make you want to vomit oh, in your mouth. Oh, how you Picture do it? How you do it, yes. girl? How you do it? I'd be like, oh no, girl. Be like, <laughs> be like tequila. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I never altogether. I'm never but gonna ever, drink ever. Again. Ever. again. No, Two but days then you later. start talking to the Lord. You know, yep. I'm like, Lord, if you just please. If this one time, time, I will never, ever, ever. Just help me right now. Please, Jesus. please. Yes. You know, back in the Jesus days, they had wine, so, you know, Jesus don't think ain't nothing wrong with a little drink. No, it's at all. it's when you overdrink. And when you tell overdrink, you to get drunk. You swear that you part. can live without alcohol for the rest of your life. And why, like, 24 hours later, somebody pops something open, you look at it, and you're like, I should just have a little sip. Me. Yeah. Right? That's, it's my, just that's so my thing. I say that all the time whenever I get too I'm drunk. I'm like, I'm going to take that. With alcohol? <laughs> no. She, Tamira, is, Tamira is Miss Wine. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I. Cam. What? You yeah. had one. <laughs> Cam, you had one time. You remember the time? Friend. What? Like Michael Jackson, remember the time? What? Oh. Yo, you, me, and our husbands went out. Okay. And our boys have a little too much fun sometimes. I think yes. it's something in the white boy energy. <laughs> and they started serving us old fashions. Yes, but I never say I'm never gonna do that again. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, that's what I mean. She wakes up okay. and says, I just need some Advil and some water. Yeah, and so you know, because I choose when I'm gonna do that. So yeah. when I do it, I do it. <laughs> and then, you know, I live my life. And then, you know, come it back happens. And, and then I come back and I revisit it. And you know what, Tamira? I'm Later. like you. Because you, know, you know, one thing I learned not to do is say never. Because I swear to my yeah. life, every time I say never, you I do always do what I say I'm never going to do. Yes. Yeah. That's one thing that I do not recommend that you, I swear to God, it's crazy. Like, it's giving me goosebumps. <laughs> Just don't use the word never. Just be like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to do that again. Because it's like it's a jinx. Yes. Okay, this is true, it's but crazy. right now at this table, is there anything you, because you, you've lived through it and you've done it, that you could absolutely guarantee you would never do never or do say again. or. Oh, okay. Never say yeah. never. I would never, ever, 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 <laughs> ever again go skydiving. Okay? <laughs> you you went skydiving? Never, <laughs> never again. Never again. I no, take thank that you. One. Skydiving. Someone told me that skydiving, jumping out of an airplane, would actually help me with my fear of flying. Yeah. That was a lie. <laughs> yeah. When I tell you, it was, I was screaming for baby Jesus, my mommy. I was like, mommy, papi, por qué? Like, it was terrible. It was, there was nothing about that that was like freeing or like, I could, like, no, I still understood I am not a bird. There's no wings attached uh -huh. to me. I'm praying to God that this thing is going to open. It was terrible. Not fun yeah. at all. I think, um, for me, I actually love to fly. I've, I've told you guys yeah. this before. I've wanted to be a flight attendant. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I can remember my sister and I visiting uh, Eleuthera for the first time, which is a little island in Bahamas. It's mm -hmm. so beautiful. However, you have to take this little plane. Oh no! Oh yeah! To Ooh. the island, and I swear to God, yeah, it was it was like yeah. that. I and I have thought. faith, but I am never putting my faith through that again, no, ever, okay. ever. I guess again. It was. Terrifying, and my sister hates to fly, so she was like, "Oh my god, oh my god, are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it?" Then I have to be the strong one, like, "Yes, Tia, we are." I but love I it. Speaking of decisions, you don't ever need to make that decision again. <laughs> Someone who just made a big one is singer Janet Jackson. In video posted on TMZ, Janet, who recently celebrated the birth of her son Issa, discussed what would happen to the tour she postponed back when she decided to have a family with her estranged husband. So, ladies. Janet is 50 years old and she just had a new baby. What do you guys think of her decision to head back onto the road? She ain't got September? no choice. Listen. The, what you mean? But she listen. got an obligation. She, they did not pay those people monies back when she canceled the first tour and one lady okay. was about to sue her oh. and sue um, the, the company that put it on. So she I really know yeah. that. But so she, yeah. That's cool and everything, but I'm going to tell you like this, insurance could take care of that. Secondly, the best thing I think any woman should do after a baby, it's definitely important for them to want to work. And it's like, it's so much stress in a woman itself to be able to give her body, to let it, hold, to let it borrow it to another human, you know, for so long. But you should she sick? take some time off? I mean, no, I haven't had a baby. No, 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 no. It depends on the woman. Some women really just like to take that time. Um, I know in Europe, 
women can actually take a year off what? of work. work. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And um, in the States, I think we only have a, a three month maternity yeah, three leave. Months. For me, for my first child, I definitely wanted to take three months off um, because it was my first child and I wanted to build that connection with my baby. The first three months are really, really important. Yeah. And uh, that's what I wanted to do. My sister and I were doing a reality show called Tia and Tamara and they wanted me to go to work quickly but I gotta give it up to my sister and the production company for letting me make that decision to yeah. stay home. Yeah. But, so it just depends. It depends on, on, on the mom. What about with Araya? With Araya, I had no choice but to come back to work. Yeah. Uh, I came back just to work. Just like Jen. Yes. Uh, well. <laughs> and, and that could be uh, Araya, well, it was helpful weeks. or do you how well, was it for you? But again, it was a different situation because I was able to bring Araya with me. Yeah, Remember, yeah. Uh, we had her in my dressing room. I was and able Jen to is her able, I knew that you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to see her doing control yeah. and breastfeeding. All right? Oh my All God. God. Now, Jocelyn, we've had you at this table before, and we're excited to have you back this yes. week again. We've gotten to know you uh, really well, and we love having you here. But a lot of people know you from Love and Hip Hop, and um, we know that there's more to you than that. There's so much more to you than that. And we want you to share your story. You know, like, I know that you grew up in Puerto Rico. I did, girl. I and did grow yes. up in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. But I'm curious as to what was your childhood like growing up in Puerto Rico? You know, it was, it was pretty cool. Because, of course, Puerto Rico is beautiful. Yeah. But, you know, I could just tell you one story. Like, you know, I, was, I went outside, and, you know, we love to go outside without any shoes. You know, Puerto Ricans. Yeah. <laughs> and we live, like, by the beach. So yeah. everything is just, like, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was running, but we lived in the projects. Yeah. You know, we lived in the projects, the it's real projects. Caserio, right? Yeah, Caserio. We lived in the Caserio. So I remember one day I was running to go meet my hunger. I was, like, a little kid. Um, ran... And I got a needle stuck on my foot. The needle got stuck on my foot. I ran upstairs. My mama took it out. She sat me on the washing machine. She took it off. And she gave me a kiss. I went right on it's by my business. It's a hypodermic needle? Girl, it was a drug needle. <gasps> yeah. OK. Yeah, well, that. Girl, do you know you can't use these big words with the Puerto Rican glasses? No, no, no. This is for the yeah, viewers, so it was, not for yeah, you. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a drug needle. It, it was a... Um, it was a heroin needle, you know. Wow. In the Casadillos, that's in Puerto Rico. That's like back in the 80s. I was born in the 80s. I'm, I'm 30 now, I just turned 30, so in the 80s. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it was just a drug-infested place, and that's just what it was, but we lived through it, we fought it, we passed through it, and then we just keep moving. Like, you it's got not the a big needle, deal. How did you feel? Was you scared? What happened? How did she explain to you what that was? Well, I knew what it was, because my dad died of a heroin overdose. So I, you know, I knew that, you know, the whole hood was on heroin. Yeah. Do you mind me asking if you were close with your father, or how old were you when your father passed? Well, we was, we was me and my brother, we on, the only two that had the same father. He okay. passed when we was uh, 13 years old, and you know, my mom is like, she come home one day and tells me and my brother, at the time I was 13, my brother was uh, 15, mm -hmm. and my oldest brother, and my mom is like, you know your daddy died. We was like, what, girl? <laughs> but we only seen him a few times, so, we can only give, she can only give us what he gave her mm -hmm. and right. what he gave us. So she's just like, your daddy died, you don't know him anyways, I'm just giving you the news. Ooh. Got it. So when you got to the States, what was it like for you then? Here, yeah. Well, you know, I was six, so I didn't speak any English. Yeah. I was all, that, I still don't speak any English, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you. So I had a pretty good time uh, growing up in, um, in Fort Lauderdale when I was like in, you know, kindergarten and then uh, middle school and then went into high school, which I dropped out of high school. I went to middle school, started doing hair, dropped out of that too. I, I just, I'm just a dropout. <laughs> I'm like Kanye. No, okay. you're not. I'm like Kanye, so I dropped out again. And so look, we was cute, right? We was like, we was so cute. We was just like fly young girls. We got involved in a strip club. We was just like, we young, we pretty. Guys want to give us money. You know, I've been to Africa, been to... I, I, Canada, a lot of places. I mean, at 17, 18, 19 years old, you know, and I made two, three thousand dollars in one night mm. when a I was like 18 years that. old. People are like, well, why would a young girl? And I get, I get the moral question of it, but people are like, well, how are these girls making money? They're making two and three thousand dollars a night. Yeah. yeah. So as you were dancing, you met Stevie. Well, J. I always wanted to do music. I always wanted to be like Selena. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the club looking for a producer. Psh. Yep. Uh, yep. So I'm like, oh. You know, one of my other homies was like, you know, that's Stevie J. My baby daddy got seven Grammys. So I'm like, he's the man to go to. 
right? Uh, anyway, so make a long story short, it was more, we really fell in love with each other. Like, it was love at first sight. It was mm. love at first sight. Wow. And now we have a baby seven years later. Wow. Seven years wow. That's crazy. That's wow. Crazy. Seven years later. So y'all still together? <laughs> I told you you got to watch Love and Hip Hop. Oh, y'all yeah. still together. I'm looking at you. You know, uh -huh. when I first got into business, it's like, oh, she doesn't make music. Oh, she's not an actress. But uh, I'm not an actress. I take acting classes, and I'm on Fox doing an acting show. Hey. You know? And, oh, not to mention, they said I was a man, but I just popped out a kid. To uh, you know, I don't know where they got that one from. But I'm always going to have something no. to say. Exactly. Yeah. Now, when you're a kid, it's normal for your parents to give you advice. But what happens when the tables turn? 73, I don't know why I was about to say 63, but 73 old <laughs> diva and music legend Diana Ross. That's because she looks 63. Yes, yeah, she does. Recently told the New York Post that her daughter, blackish star Tracy Ellis Ross, actually gives her advice. And Diana said, quote, Role reversal. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. She yeah. said it's role reversal. So, ladies, now that you've grown up, do you give your uh, parents advice? I was yeah. giving, I was giving my mama advice when I was fourteen because I was spilling the bread like, girl. <laughs> and, and even still, now I'm older, and she's like, what? ¿Qué tú, qué tú crees? Mom, ¿Qué tú crees? What like, does that mean? What does it mean? What, what, do, you, what, do, you what do you think? What do you think? My mom literally, before she goes anywhere, my mom really wasn't into fashion when I was growing up. Yeah. Or maybe just when I was growing up. I think she was into it before she had children. And then I think she felt she kind of lost us. So she was just like a mom for right. so many years. And now that we're grown, when she has to go to events, she's like literally in like H&M and like the stores and she'll take pictures of herself in the dressing room. <gasps> which which one should I wear? Number one, number two, or number three? Numbers. They so always she'll send numbers. me different so outfits and I have to pick out what, And she hits me with a... <laughs> what do you think? Okay. And so I'll pick like out her outfits things. and stuff like that. Mainly that kind of stuff. I have to help my mom with technology. So, oh. you know, because she's yes. 75. Oh, so wow. I'll, I'll help her out with technology. And now she loves it with the cell phone oh, every week. Love. That's how we kind of connect. Mm -hmm. I, you know, load certain apps up and yes. stuff. You know, I keep her away from the crazy stuff. But, you know, the good stuff. But then she liked the little naughty stuff, too. I was mm. looking... You know, I had to check her phone. Like, a kid. I'm like, wait a minute, what are you looking at? What, you know? Yeah, really? I had to, yeah. My love ain't no joke. Ah. <laughs> she told me, I'm 75, but I ain't dead. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. This is such a nice time in our life right now where I feel like I'm giving back to my parents because I can help them, you know? Yeah. I got parents the types that, that they don't trust the bank, so they don't put money in the bank. They <laughs> just hide hysterical. their cash in parts of the house. Like, they just hide it under the mattress. They got it in all these secret places. Glad you're telling everybody. I know. Oh, girl, because oh, I... Yeah. Yeah, I... Well, because I... Everybody, my them. parents' money is under the right sofa. Yeah. No, girl, because that would be <laughs> stupid.com. I got smart. I took all their money and I invested it, but I had to do without them knowing. So I actually oh. went to the secret places ah. that I know. I took it. You guys, I tripled their savings. And my dad took his first, vac first vacation three years ago that he's ever had in his entire life. And it was so special for me to look at him. And he, he said, thank you, Gong. And Gong is Vietnamese oh, that's for my, my love, oh. you know? And to give back in that way. Yes. That's what beautiful. is that? Thank you, Gong. Gong. Thank you, Gong. Gong, Gong is like... You came from me, gong. Oh, gong. oh my God! It's okay. Gong, I, yes. Yeah, Don't mix with the that. gong that now, so girl. Sweet. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> all so nice, but my mom, Mama Garlene, ah, what? You don't give her advice. Ooh, really? At all? No. About anything? No. Like what? I what? try. Like, you know, she'll she'll say she's going through something. Well, mom, how about you pray? I did. Ooh. I do. I do all the time. My mom is kind of like like I was telling you. She's like the matriarch of our family. She is like the mother hen. So everybody goes to yeah. her for help. Yeah. So it would kind of be honestly for me, it would kind of be disrespectful. Yeah. To go to her and give her advice because mama darlene she she knows a lot of a lot of wisdom so yeah. honestly guys she's still teaching me she got to this day that's ain't yeah. nothing wrong with all, that i think we all can agree that we have some of the most creative fans out there yes. they're always leaving the best comments on all of our pictures so we thought we would open up our vault full of photos and see what you would come up with sit back and get ready to giggle it's time once again to meme this Woo! Oh, 
the faces we make. Okay, we posted some photos on thereal.com and asked you guys to help us come up with the perfect memes. This first photo is of us on the couch during a commercial break. Oh my, I don't what the remember heck? this. Lonnie, what were you doing? Uh, my face. Well, Cyrie Lamas came up with this uh, hilarious meme when The Bachelor picked your friend for the final rose, but not you. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, that's funny. And look, Jasmine Rogers, she created this amazing one, the face you made when you really see what's in Lonnie's purse. Oh! <laughs> that is. Oh, and Lonnie's got the that's look like, uh -huh. yep. What's and in then, your purse? <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. And then Carmen Jackson, you thought of this meme, when the person you don't like falls. <laughs> Ooh, that is, I look like she deserved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. she gets. Oh my gosh. We also posted this photo of Jeannie and me striking Which a one? pole. Oh, huh? I love Ooh. this. I remember this. Jeannie okay. always doing like this. We look so this. cute, Lonnie. Jeannie, what yes, is, do. what are you what doing? What were you doing? Yeah. I don't, you know what, I don't remember what we were thinking, but I always like hand? messing with Lonnie. I always do, because yeah. she can always take it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but check this out though. Stacey McConnell said, when the brown liquor kicks in. <laughs> That's pretty true. You and I love our brown liquor, That is man. funny. Though. And Janessa Velasquez had a suggestion. She said, when your mom makes you be friends with the weird kid. <laughs> that, yes. that's a good one. that one is hilarious. Now, that one right there, oh, that, that was funny. the best one. <laughs> These guys are so funny. I love this one. We have one more, Mimi. And Tamira. Yes, This one's for you. OK. Well, and we posted this photo oh, of you geez. giving the full-on Araya side Oh, my oh God, my that God. is her. Oh, my God. That, that is, is my baby. Araya, 100%. That's now, Araya. Don Tavius Holloway must know you because she said the face you make when they tell you they have no more wine in the back. Ooh. That's the face. Yes, I've seen that face. Oh, my God. And Jenna Vasquez said, when the ugly friend wants your number. Ooh. <laughs> That's I would really do that. Funny thing. Really? Yes. Yeah, but we saving the best for last. What? Candace Pipkin said, "Did that bee just call me Tia?" Oh. <laughs> That's the best one. The Dr. Oz Show has been giving us the tips we need to live a healthy lifestyle for eight seasons, y'all, it. okay? Love it. It's taking home a total of nine Emmys. And today, the doctor is in our house for a visit. Please welcome my friend, Dr. Oz. <laughs> My wife loves her so much. Oh, I love you guys. Oh, I always hear about it. I actually got to meet her because you won an Emmy last yes. Sunday. So we have to congratulate you. We actually yes. got to see you guys there for your big win. Well, you're very kind. That it was, is it, so awesome. The only, only awkward part, my wife wasn't rooting for me. What? <laughs> Who what? is she rooting for? My daughter, that yes. day. Oh, okay. yeah. See, that's I get that. competition. Yeah. So your wife is so amazing. You guys have been together for 30 wow. years. Wow. She was and still is the one for you. Because she's tough as nails, and she would tell me exactly what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. I hope she doesn't hear this, but I always say, <laughs> the prosecution never rests in my home. <laughs> she's on me all the time. Wow. But you know, I guess about relationships, it's actually 31 years. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh wow. Make sure 31. 31, yeah. folks. 31. Yeah. Yeah. I've That's actually, important. I love it. I've actually been married to four different women. They all have the same social security number. But we reinvent ourselves, right? Uh -huh. I mean, you, you, you meet someone, and as soon as you meet, they're changing. And yeah. men marry the woman just the way they want her. Yeah. And then you guys all change. Yep. And yep. women marry the men that we think we can become. You have a vision for us we don't have. <laughs> and we don't get that. So you have to keep coming at us like this. And after a couple of years, you sort of lose your way. You got to reconnect. That's I good advice. You. I love yeah. that. Oh, that is, that is an honest answer. I love that. Now, not only are you a grandfather, but you're a doctor in real life, a doctor on TV, so everybody knows you. Yeah. Where's the weirdest place you've gotten asked for advice? Planes. Airplanes? Planes. Airplanes, and it really? happens a lot. Really, yeah. give sometimes, us an example. But well, well, sometimes you have emergencies too, but you'll right. be sitting yeah. down there and someone will come over here, can I, can I ask you a question real quick? And then they all to go. Now, by the way, if you're on a trans, you know, Atlantic flight or across the country, yeah. you have four hours of consultations. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I start collecting co-pays, I've got a whole building <laughs> system in place that goes on. That's, no, that's, that's so I cool. know. 
you had a couple of celebrities, you know, ask you for some advice. Yeah. Can you tell us who? Well, you know, there's an etiquette, which you probably know. Doctors can't talk about their patients. Okay. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what? I'll tell you one story. Okay. So Barbara Streisand, who I'm a Ooh, huge wow. fan of. Okay. okay. She calls me up, and I had never met her before, and she said, I'm coming into New York City. We tape our show in New York. Yeah. And she said, I'd like to meet with you. I said, oh, my goodness. I wonder what's wrong with her. She says, when you want to meet, just, you know, we're staying at this place. You know, this time, so I, got, I get there, and she's there with Jim Brolin, who I'm a, just a huge fan of as well. And she has a big yellow pad in front of her. So I sit down, and I've got all my medical stuff out. And, and she goes, okay, first thing, uh, the lighting on your stage. I'm noticing your <laughs> neck is too dark. Number two, when you walk over to the truth tube area, you really are not, the angle's not right there. The camera needs to come. And she went through a list of 30 what? things. She was my doctor. Oh, oh no. Oh, what? Right. I can't. That's the kind of lady she notes for your show. Right. Yeah. This is the reason why your show is successfully on its eighth season. Congratulations mm -hmm. to that. Eighth yeah. season. We appreciate it. There's got to be a dream guest. Who would it be? Anybody out there? Angelina Jolie. Really? Oh, yeah, why? 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 Because she had a big problem. She dealt with it in a very forthright mm. fashion. Yeah. Yes. And then she told the truth. Mm -hmm. Ah. And I want to understand what went through her mind when she decided. And the problem to, was. She had a sorry. You're kind, yeah, you're kind of pointing that out. She had an, a, horm, a, um, a genetic defect that predisposed her to breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called the BRCA gene. And so she had to have both her breasts taken out. So here's a woman who defines herself by her sexuality. At least mm -hmm. we define her by that yes. way. Right. And she wasn't defined that way. And so she went and did what was best for her body and then started writing about it and talking about it. Yeah. So I think, I, I love those kinds of conversations. I mean, Alec Baldwin's on the show this, this week. I want to understand what makes him tick, not just when he's copying Trump, yeah. but mm -hmm. actually get past the addictions that he's been so open about. Yeah. Yeah. I love when people come on the show. Because listen, the, the, the best and most legal performance-enhancing drug is trust. Mm. Right? And I always tell my team, and I know you tell that here as well, we have a trust with you, the audience, yep. each of you out there watching. Yep. We come into your home with, with people that we think you'll trust us with. We have to trust that our guests are comfortable in front of us, and yes. we have to trust each other to do the right by them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we have all that happen, then you can get an Angelina Jolie to talk about stuff in a way she hadn't before, and that's when I feel the most pride. Right. So, um, tell us who you have coming up on your show now. So I've got, you know, we're doing a series of shows this month on... Uh, people we lost too soon. Alan mm -hmm. Thick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we, oh. you know, as, as an example, yeah. uh, Princess Leia's coming on. Right? Yeah. Actually, not really, right? Her yeah. sister's coming on, but we're, yeah. her, we want to re-envision her image because you, you, you realize that there are people who shouldn't have died, we think, and yeah. we have lost. And what can we learn from that and what can we have done differently? Yes, yeah. too many. And so we've got, uh, you know, uh, Paul's family, we have actually the, 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 a series of shows about investigations, almost forensics and what we can do differently to be healthy in America, looking at famous cases where it didn't go well. Wow. And, and that, that's what I think will change. <gasps> We've got questions and he's got the answers. So it's about to go down. This is What's Up Down There. Ooh. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm, yeah, I'm crossing my legs. Okay. <laughs> oh, my. Right. Right. Case. Dr. Ott, so when we heard you were coming on the show, we knew that this was our chance to ask you the questions that we're all thinking, yes. but rarely we ask. So I'm going to go first. Okay. Does waxing or shaving affect our health down there, and which one is better? Good one, Tam. Yeah. Good one. I've always wanted to know this. <laughs> so I, it doesn't help or hurt your health. Okay. okay. But uh, by, by almost 90% of people cut or shave something or wax something. Yep. The, the shaving tends to cause more cuts. Okay. And we see, hear more complications from them, probably because people do shave more often than not. Mm -hmm. uh, the waxing, when they do have complications, they're worse complications, more burning. Yes. Uh, that's sort of a big issue. But I always wonder why women do all that, because there's a, really a purpose for that hair. Oh, we like that's it smooth. That's what we're wondering. Like, okay, like, when we <laughs> removed the hair, the hair was put there to, like, protect us. But is that only for, like, when we were in the jungle back in the day? Because yeah. now we're not there anymore. Yeah. So and can it go? And if we have no hair, are we safe without <laughs> it? Did she yeah. say jungle? Jungle. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> hair was intended to protect Back in the day. Hair. Yeah, back actually, in the day. Actually, it wasn't to protect it. You know what it was for? What was it for? Lubrication. <gasps> yes. Wait, what? It, it makes you rub better. Wait. No, no way. No. Yes. Uh -uh. When you have someone near you and you both have pubic hair, it glides oh, the friction. better. Oh, yes. friction. No, no way. Like, my look, look, look at my arms. So I've got lots do of me, hair. Do me, do me, okay. do me. Okay. You don't have any hair. You don't have any hair. See, if I have hair. hair. So this is comfortable. Oh, 
No, yeah. we, but I that's got hairy not. arms. Oh, okay, I get it. Uh, the hair many, is good. Well, how good. many times a year should you get it checked down there? Because this is uncomfortable sometimes, you it know, is. and especially with age. How many times? So we don't want to do anything before you're 21 because we can't do much with the information. Okay. I assume we're not looking for a you know, problem. If you have an infection or pain or you're pregnant, that's different. But from 21 to 65, every three years you want to get a pap smear. Okay. And oh, you don't have okay. to do it more than that because the can if you did have a cancer, it wouldn't grow fast enough to cause you a problem. Oh, okay. Every three years. Yes. And if you, you can even do an HPV test and get it less often if you want. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Good to know. I've done that okay. before. Yeah. Okay, right. Now I have something I really want to know. Now we've all heard that like eating pineapple yes. can help my yes. situation. Yes. You guys have heard this has been in songs and everything. <laughs> I did this before my wedding. <laughs> Me too. I did. I was on like a pineapple diet. So was I. Does, does this actually I was help? The juice. This is a fascinating show. <laughs> We keep it real. Well, That's why it's called the real. That's why you guys work. So everything you eat yes. changes the smell and the taste down there. Mm. Everything. It's true for the guys too. Yes. yes. Right? If you want to do a little experiment, I don't recommend this, but people <laughs> who smoke and know who don't smoke, you can taste it in there quickly. Ooh, yes. wow. It, yeah, very quickly. So uh, it, it, you know, pineapple per se isn't a lot better than a lot of other healthy fruits, yeah. but eating fruits and vegetables is going to be better than eating junky things. Any fluid you concentrate in your body is going to taste more like the things you eat than the things you don't. That's why you can smell it in your sweat sometimes. Yeah, like in oh, garlic yeah. or yes. things that are like really, Shoot, yeah, that's that's or brown liquor. Shoot, yeah. I'm going to get it. Yeah. That right there. Coming out of your